Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. Measuring distance with dirt cheap ultrasonic sensors and Arduinos is very useful. I use it for example for my autonomous robot. In this video I will show you how you can use these sensors in two and one pin configurations. I will test the limitations of the three sensors. HCSRO4, HYSRF05, and the newer US-015 in angle and distance. To do this, I built a setup with a stepper motor. Let's start now with the three sensors. All work with the same principle. They consist of a loudspeaker called transceiver and a microphone called receiver. The loudspeaker sends a very short ultrasonic sound burst and then the microphone starts to listen. This sound travels to the obstacle and is reflected by the same angle back to the microphone. Because sound travels in air with about 300 meters per second, it takes a while till the sound traveled from the loudspeaker to the obstacle and back to the microphone. The Arduino measures this time and calculates the distance. Quite simple. And astonishingly accurate. Three things can happen. The obstacle is big enough to reflect the tone and the microphone hears it. Good. The obstacle is too small or too soft and the reflected amount of sound cannot be heard by the microphone. No distance can be measured. The obstacle does not reflect the sound back to the microphone because it has a wrong angle. Then the microphone also does not hear anything and no distance can be measured even if the obstacle is very big. This case is important for autonomous driving as we will see in the next video. How long does a measurement take? We have to distinguish again two cases. The sound is reflected and the sound is not reflected. Let's have a look at the signals of the sensor. The top signal is the trigger and the bottom signal is the ultrasonic signal sent out by the transmitter. Right after the signal is sent out, the receiving channel goes to high and as soon as the echo comes back to the receiver, the signal goes low. The time the signal is high is the travel time of the ultrasonic sound. In the first case, we can calculate that the measurement should take about 6 milliseconds per meter distance. If we check it in reality, we can confirm it. It takes 1.2 milliseconds for 20 centimeters. Multiplied by 5, we get the expected 6 milliseconds. I'm sure my American friends forgive me my metric calculations. As a European, I'm just not bright enough to deal with your inches and feet. You can also see that the time measured varies with distance. And what happens in case 2? We wait for an echo and it never shows up. So we have to decide how long we want to wait until we give up. This determines also our maximum measuring range. If I choose 400 centimeters, the library weights 4 times 6 milliseconds equals 24 milliseconds till it returns to the controlling sketch. The result the library delivers is 0 centimeters. If you are not interested in fast measurements, this is not important for you. For fast moving robots, however, this can be an important fact. I use the new ping library which is provided by standard Arduino IDE. In the constructor we can choose the maximal distance. 
The description of the new ping library also specifies at least 29 milliseconds between two triggers. I did some tests and was able to go down to about 20 milliseconds for a maximum distance of 2 meters and down to 5 milliseconds for distances of 20 centimeters. As expected, this time varies with the maximum measuring distance chosen. The next interesting fact is the opening angle. It answers the following questions. Which obstacles can the sensor detect if they are not exactly in front of it and which not? And the second question, which obstacles might influence the reading if they are close but not important? To measure this angle, I use a stepper motor with a pizza box in various distances. All three sensors are mounted on one platform in the same direction. I transfer the results directly into Excel and do further analysis. I enclose a link to my video where I explain how this transfer to Excel can be done. Here are the results in the three different distances 0.5 meter, 1 meter and 2 meters. The opening angle of the SR04 and the SRF05 are a little over 30 degrees. The US-15 has the smallest opening angle. If I turn the sensors by 90 degrees, the opening angles are not different. This means that the sensitivity area of the sensors is a cone with an opening angle of about 30 degrees. We also see that the SRF05 starts to have problems with a pizza box in the 2 meter distance. Summarized, we can detect obstacles in the size of a pizza box up to 2 meters and plus minus 15 degrees from the axis. Next, let's check the distance measurements. In about 50 centimeters, all three sensors measure 47 to 49 centimeters, which is very good. Now we have to talk about absolute measurement. Speed of sound depends on temperature. Per 5 degrees centigrade, the speed of sound changes nearly 1%. If you want really precise measurements with these sensors, you have to adjust its initial measurements to a known distance. Here I did not do this because I was only interested in the relative numbers. In one meter distance, the accuracy is similar or better. There are not big differences between the three sensors. For devices which cost less than two dollars, this is quite good. To check the maximum distance with a big obstacle, I used a big piece of plexiglass. All sensors were able to measure distances of up to 4 meters. The SRF05 went up to 4.5 meters. Just to show you the influence of the obstacle, I want to detect myself. Because clothing does not reflect sound very good, the sensors were only able to detect me up to 50 centimeters. So for these sensors, I'm like a stealth bomber. One word to the quality of measurements of the three sensors. The US-15 provided the most stable measurements. As you see, the other two sensors were not always consistent. Therefore, I will use US-15 sensors for all my future projects. Up till now, I always used two pins per sensor, the trigger and the echo pins. It is also possible to connect these two pins together and connect the single wire to only one pin of the Arduino. The signal of the single wire is a combination between the trigger and the response signal because the library switches the pin to input right after the trigger is fired. The last task 
was to check if the three sensors work on the same principle and frequencies. To research that, I connected the trigger of all three sensors to the same signal, but covered two transmitters that they were not able to send out signals. All sensors listened to the echo sound and were able to detect it. This is important to know because it shows that sensors can interfere with each other. To be sure that the measured sound really is from a particular sensor, you have to fire them one after the other. This is exactly what I do in my robot. I attach three sensors in different angles. Here is the result. Each of the three sensors measure one part of the plus minus 60 degrees. If you search for the shortest distance, you find the valid sensor and you can decide if the obstacle is in the middle, on the left or on the right side and your autonomous robot can decide what to do. Only one problem is not solved. The problem with walls, which are nearly parallel to the robot. These obstacles are invisible to the ultrasonic sensors and the robot will not avoid them unless you turn the left and right sensors to 90 degrees. But then you lose some sight in front. One possibility could be to attach five ultrasonic sensors instead of three or to put infrared sensors to the left and to the right. They cannot measure distance, but at least they can avoid the crash with the obstacle. In the next video, I will integrate these three sensors into my robot. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!